Bom dia, pessoal. Bem-vindos ao nosso segundo dia do Seminário Internacional de Lesson Study no Ensino da Matemática. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our second day of the first season. So today we are having a plenary session about lesson study in Denmark, and I will present the part the professors of the plenary session. Vamos ter uma mesa redonda toda em inglês agora e vou apresentar os professores para vocês e o tema da mesa que é lesson study na Dinamarca. Convido para compor a mesa o professor Jacoban, o professor Klaus Rasmussen e o professor Carl Winslow. Welcome to our first season. So I will present you. O professor Carl nasceu em 1968, fez o seu mestrado na Universidade Sulista da Dinamarca e fez o seu doutorado na Universidade de Tóquio. Ocupou cargos na Universidade de Copenhague e na Universidade de Aarhus antes da sua nomeação para a posição atual como professor de didática da matemática na Universidade de Copenhague em 2003. Carl supervisionou um total de 14 doutores alunos e 64 de, alunos de mestrado e foi eleito presidente da Associação Europeia de Investigação em Matemática, ERM, em 2021. O seu interesse pela educação matemática surgiu por volta de 2000, quando tentou melhorar como professor universitário. O professor Jacob Ben, antes de seus estudos de doutorado, Jacob teve um longo relacionamento com o Japão, e possui um diploma de graduação em japonês. Desde suas primeiras aventuras e estudos japoneses, ele obteve um mestrado em educação física, com foco em educação ao ar livre. Com base nesses estudos, trabalhou e se formou como professor do ensino fundamental em matemática, ciências e educação física. As crescentes frustrações com a falta de aprendizagem dos alunos o levaram a fazer um doutorado em didática da matemática no sentido da teoria das situações didáticas, com foco particular nas abordagens japonesas para o ensino de matemática baseado em investigação e lesson study. Os estudos empíricos para o doutorado conduziram a uma cooperação contínua com o município onde está atualmente empregado com, o principal, com a principal missão de estabelecer uma nova cultura de ensino e de desenvolvimento do ensino nas suas escolas. Por isso, é coordenador do projeto de Lesson Study nas escolas dinamarquesas. O professor Klaus, nascido em 1976, possui mestrado em História da Ciência, Matemática e Física pela Universidade de Aarhus. Trabalha com formação de professores desde 2003 e, em 2016, recebeu seu doutorado em Educação Matemática sob a supervisão de Carl Inglo. Klaus atuou como membro do Conselho da Comissão Nacional Dinamarquesa em exames para professores. Atualmente é professor associado do Instituto de Formação de Professores na Universidade College Copenhague e é presidente do grupo de especialistas em matemática pré-escolar, o Centro Nacional de Ensino de Matemática, enquanto passa a maior parte do tempo em vários projetos de pesquisa relativos à formação inicial e contínua de professores. Teremos a mesa agora sobre Lesson Study na Dinamarca. <risos> Apresentamos três casos da atividade de Lesson Study atual na Dinamarca, realizadas em três contextos. Primeiro, convidamos o professor Jacob Ben, que vai falar sobre os anos iniciais e finais. Depois, o professor Klaus Rasmussen, também sobre a formação de professores nos anos iniciais e finais e o professor Carl Winslow no ensino médio. Enfatizamos fenômenos gerais e mais locais observados nesses contextos. Aproveitem a mesa. Enjoy the plenary session. Ok. Ok. Good morning in Brazil this afternoon in Denmark. Nice to be here. So I will present a, a case from Denmark, which I have entitled Lesson Study and Teaching Through Problem Solving, Success and Challenge. 
So we have very short time and I have a lot to say. So this will be like a tour de force. And it will be a non-scientific account of our e efforts uh, like it was presented before. We want to establish a culture, not only try with lesson study, but establish a culture based on lesson study to develop teaching through problem solving. And we want to do it at the, all our schools in one municipality in Denmark. So that municipality, uh, does it shift? No. There you are. So the municipality is called Lyngby Torbik. You see it to the right in the in the eastern part of Denmark. Um, so this is a small presentation of myself. I'm a former teacher. I did a PhD with Carl Winslow as presented, and then I now work in this municipality at which I have done my empirical studies for my PhD. I want to talk about five things in this short time. One is uh, the phases of our project. The next is uh, the, the question of concrete inspiration, which I will explain. Then I will uh, point out some learnings and non-learnings in our efforts. I will bring some suggestions and advice, and I will point to something which needs further scrutiny uh, to enhance our efforts in Denmark and in general. So the first phase of our uh, project actually started before I was involved. It was back in 2012 when uh, Carl Winslow, Professor Carl Winslow presented uh, uh, the concept of lesson study and uh, teaching through problem solving or uh, different uh, formulations of Japanese teaching. And the presentation included a video which is of, of a lesson which is called Reflect on the Meaning of Same Form. You can read more about it in one of Winslow's papers. And this is really important because what it offered was a very concrete image of what teaching can look like. And the um, municipality official who was uh, there at the presentations talking about the, uh, the way that this inspired gave it an image of what teaching under the paradigm of social constructivism could look like. And uh, also in this period, uh, some teachers at some schools did uh, some uh, few experiments with lesson studies in cooperation with some teacher educators. This was not yet aimed at uh, teaching through problem solving or any other specific direction. So in phase two, um, these are the empirical studies for my PhD in which uh, three schools were involved. At each school, we had uh, one team of teachers of three or four teachers, and they did three lesson studies in one year. So the experience was so good that the, the teachers and the municipality officials asked me if I could uh, continue working with lesson studies and uh, developing uh, teaching while I was finishing my PhD. So I did that uh, uh, from uh, the following school year. And in phase three, which runs from 2016 until 2020, I was uh, working like an, uh, like an external uh, consultant who came and facilitated and organized lesson study. At, at this time, uh, uh, more of the schools in, uh, in the municipality. So halfway through this phase three, I, did, I finished my PhD and then I was hired by the municipality. So from then on, from 2018, uh, I could also offer uh, other uh, activities than lesson study, including uh, uh, courses and workshops and so on, which would uh, supply, uh, uh, supplement our, our efforts. Um, also, some of the uh, schools, they started to use the format of open lesson for their professional meetings uh, for mathematics teachers. And uh, at least three schools have uh, experimented with this. And at one of the schools, they did it uh, throughout these four years of uh, phase three, that all the professional meetings between teachers was in the format of open lessons, which means that uh, some of the teachers would open up their teaching to uh, other to their colleagues, and they would uh, uh, share uh, these ob the observations and discuss what they saw. Um, yeah, so this led to a, a, a huge variety of experiences, and uh, some of them were more uh, if, uh, had a more effect than others. And uh, so we 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 went to we uh, started a new phase, phase four, which uh, which was initiated in two thousand twenty. So 
here in, uh, from 2020, what we did especially, I will, I will come into this in more detail in a, in a few seconds, was that we, instead of doing lesson study at a lot of schools with a few teachers here and there, we focused only on one school. Other schools can still uh, experiment a bit, but we focused on one school and we introduced what we called school-wide lesson study or what is called school-wide lesson study where all the teachers of mathematics uh, do a lesson study and they will also uh, share their lesson studies with each other. So, and uh, here from now on, there's a specific uh, focus on teaching through problem solving. So, even now it's more focused and there is a, a, a more uh, supported effort. What we realized now was also that we met a lot more frustrations. And let's get back to this. Uh, one thing that changed um, from the phases before and onto phase four here is that we changed from in the lesson study to have multiple uh, uh, research lessons to only have one. And we came to miss that a lot. So here I have highlighted uh, some of the important changes that we did. Uh, and um, so in the first uh, three phases, we did more or less the same thing, just more and more. Changing from phase three to four, we we made a lot of, uh, of uh, changes. And here I listed uh, some important ones. So first of all, we changed from many schools to one school. We changed from focusing on some teachers at schools to all the teachers at the school. And uh, we also uh, uh, organized the lesson studies in a different way. Until now, each lesson study had been like a, an individual lesson study that was kind of on its own. But now the teachers, when they did a lesson study, they should invite in all their colleagues so that we had this um, a mutual, mutual observation and reflection. And then we uh, cut down from three research lessons to only one research lesson. We changed the idea of a le a lesson study to be focusing on on what we call an, an uh, one-off lesson, like a standalone lesson. And we tried to uh, combine more what we did in lesson study with the ordinary teaching, so that it should be the, the research lesson of a lesson study should be a part of a unit of a teaching a specific topic in, uh, in mathematics. And then we decided to, to add some time to write a report since we had not seen much writing until this time. So the reasons we did these changes is, first of all, for the first three changes, this was also our own thinking that we thought that, that these changes would make our efforts more efficient. And then we had some advice from some international uh, experts on lesson study and uh, teaching through problem solving, uh, who also uh, mentioned these three, but added another three changes that they, they uh, uh, thought was necessary. And um, so we did this, but now we, have, uh, now we are back to do some more changes, or actually we, we will sort of roll back because we realized that it's not a, it's probably not sufficient with only one research lesson. As teachers, unexperienced as we are with, with this kind of teaching and, and lesson study, we need more, um, uh, how can I say, uh, we need to more re uh, feedback from our efforts and we need the possibility to kind of adjust at the same time, not wait until next year to uh, follow up on our uh, considerations and observations and so. And then we also want to leave the idea of the unit-based unit lesson study. It's simply too difficult. There are so many uh, techniques to be learned about teaching um, in, in new ways. There are many, the, there's the structure of the lesson, there is the techniques that are necessary for each phase of the lesson. So we want to focus on these. And once we're familiar with this, we will hopefully come back to unit-based lesson studies, which basically makes very good sense. So I want to mention a little about 
um, the school that we are focusing on with with a school wide lesson study. We call it the model school. So already in phase two, they were part of our of the empirical studies for for the PhD. And one thing that's really interesting that's contrary to all the other teachers at the other schools, actually at this school they were a little bit critical or skeptical. They really wanted uh, me to persuade them to believe that this was a good idea and they would not accept it before they had seen it in reality that this could be sort of different. It's also uh, interesting that one of the teachers at the time later become a part-time school leader, which helped the project a lot. So based on those very good um, uh, experiences in phase two, they went, uh, if not all in, then at least they, they tuned up a lot in phase three. So uh, as I mentioned before, they, they uh, changed all their professional meetings into open lessons. And uh, they uh, did a relatively high number of lesson studies during these years. So they had a, uh, also a high number of teachers with some lesson study experience. There was a very strong, or there is a very strong uh, support from the leader. And then they have uh, accepted to spend some time on uh, educating some of their teachers to be facilitators of lesson study. So basically this school was chosen because they showed the strongest commitment uh, across all uh, levels. And their teachers had also been the one who progressed the most, most of the, in the prior efforts. So one of the things that I have at least come to believe that we should uh, focus on a lot and which I can see in hindsight that has been very, very important for the teachers in the municipality as such, but also especially at the model school. It's a, what I mentioned here as a concrete inspiration. And um, I've made, I'm, here I, I mentioned three kinds of concrete in, in inspiration, which I believe are the most important. There are other forms as well. But one thing is videos of uh, teaching through problem solving lessons or other kinds of uh, Japanese lessons, because they give this concrete image of what teaching can look like. And uh, then we have been so fortunate in Denmark to be able to have a Kenkyu Kai, which is a, a, like a lesson study conference at which we could t invite Japanese super teachers, expert teachers to teach our Danish students. And we then could have a discussion with them about their teaching and their students learning. And uh, our teachers, they very, very often refer to these uh, lessons they have observed uh, in the, which we then call concrete inspiration. And then there is, of course, what is our own, the internal, that we observe each other's lessons. Even those are not in the same uh, way super lessons. It's really inspiring to see your colleagues, how they work and discuss with them. And, and uh, this is, of course, also a, a, a part of lesson study. But in this case, we're trying also to do it between teams. And, uh, and I really cannot uh, uh, emphasize how much I believe that uh, these concrete kind of inspiration are crucial for teachers to move on. Then I want to point to some learnings. These are, I've asked some teachers to to put their own words, to put it into their own words, what they feel that they gain from this kind of work. And here are just some few examples and, and uh, we don't have time to go through all of them, but uh, it's just uh, they, together they, they show that progress is really small it, and slow. It's not like there are huge steps in, the, in changes of teaching, but it is about changing the mind of the teacher and, and, and adding few aspects, uh, new aspects in their teaching and being aware of new things that they were not before. And I think that the last quote here, I'll just read it, is uh, really strong. So here's a teacher, he says, I've been a teacher for 20 years. This is the first time I had tried something which made me a better teacher. So he has 20 years of experience with all kinds of uh, developmental um, uh, things to, to develop the teaching, but nothing really developed. Now suddenly he feel, even it's just small changes, that this, uh, this gives a, a totally new perspective on developing 
your own teaching. So these are my uh, some of my observations from the perspective of the facilitator. First of all, it's, it's uh, interesting to see that teachers realize that there is something to learn about the teaching which they never knew was there, right in front of their nose. And some of the things that they learn, we can boil down to that uh, they realize the very small details in their teaching can have a huge effect on, on people's learning. They also often realize that we generally don't have a, a very high level of mathematical knowledge as Danish teachers, and uh, we usually, uh, oh, and it's usually not very precise our knowledge. It's also interesting that we generally uh, misjudge how much or how little the students they know or how they think. It's very often we realize that they know much less than the teacher I think. But likewise, we also often realize that they know much more than the teacher thinks, especially if the teacher let the children talk. And then, of course, it's obvious for teachers that they realize in a new way that the shared observation and reflection can be very powerful. Then there are some non-learnings. And point one of the non-learnings is that the learnings I've just mentioned, that's only partial learnings and it doesn't count for all teachers. So even we can, we, can, uh, we can point to those learnings for some teachers, it's really not all teachers who are, who are going there or it's not equally clear for all teachers. And I think that it really, we really we realize that it's very challenging for teachers to adapt to this new kind of teaching. It's sort of a revolution that instead of focusing on how you want to present your knowledge, you have to figure out how you can help teachers develop their knowledge. And it's in the, it's related the, that it's really difficult to begin as a teacher to understand students' thinking in a, in a new way. We're not used to that. And it's also really a challenge to uh, consider the progression. Uh, it should be part of the teaching job, but we are not very used to consider progression, uh, and especially not in detail. And um, then it's a surprising uh, result from this is that teachers in general have a, a very hard time uh, formulating the precise learning goals or the target knowledge for a given lesson or for a given unit. And, uh, and that's, of course, a huge challenge in <laughs> working with lesson study and uh, teaching through problem solving. And then it's uh, generally very difficult to adopt the idea that lesson study is sort of a systematic experiment with your teaching and student learning. So based on these advices or based on these experiences presented very, very fast, uh, we have some suggestions. And one thing is, of course, to be persistent and focused. We do see a progression. We do see a development, but it's very slow. Uh, Please provide your teachers with concrete inspiration. This is one of the, it, it appears to be one of the, the most important aspects for driving them forward. And uh, you should hook up with experts or others with more experience. I mean, we, even we have been working with lesson study for some years now, we still, uh, we are still beginners and we are still learning a lot every time we engage with people more experienced than we are. And then it also appears to be uh, to be very uh, fruitful to establish few and small like enclaves or uh, uh, so small bodies of of lesson study uh, cultures, so that rather than aiming at a, a lot of different teachers at a lot of different schools, focus on a few teachers, preferably all the teachers, at, but just at one school or few schools at least. So. One of the things that we really, really need, and we lack so much every day we think about this, we need to understand better what is actually the teacher's possible learning and lesson study. We know some of the things, but we really don't know all. And what we need to know even more is if there would be some sort of beneficial progression, possible and beneficial progression for teachers learning. What is the best progression? What should be learned first and what can then be learned afterwards? We also need to learn how we then can help teachers follow this progression. How should we facilitate? How should we organize? What kind of materials should we bring forth to help teachers 
develop in these uh, steps. And then, of course, we need to figure out how do we educate somebody to do that? So this was a, a short, very fast presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jakob. It was an amazing presentation. Obrigada, Thank professor, professor Jakob, pela apresentação. Foi muito boa. Deu para a gente ter esse panorama de como as escolas municipais de Namarquesas estão é, ingressando com esse projeto de Lesson Study. E nós vamos passar a palavra agora para o professor Klaus. Please, Klaus. Thank you. Yes, now I believe you can see my slide. Yes. And yes, good, thank you. And uh, this, there's a lot of text on this slide, but it is just the description, uh, my abstract, for what I'm going to say today, so you don't have to read it. But uh, considering the 20 minutes that I have for this uh, presentation, I have uh, chosen to, well, say a little more about uh, some things and a little less about some other things. One of the first uh, things that uh, I'm going to say a little less about, if I change the slide here, is that I'm going to say a little more about uh, the one project called Looking at uh, Looking Together, a Mathematics Lesson. That I'll say more about than the other project that is uh, about systematized peer learning mathematics. And that is, of course, because uh, <laughs> I don't think I can uh, do as well as a Jacob, which is truly false, then I'll be more modest and try to just say <laughs> something perhaps more in detail about just one project. So <clears throat> the whole idea uh, with these uh, rather small projects comes from uh, ICMI 2013, where uh, our good colleague uh, Stefan Kivast put uh, forward the the consideration of uh, what uh, does it actually take uh, to have a lesson study? Uh, that is to say, can you take a lot of elements out of a lesson study? And then is it still lesson study or when does it not, uh, when is it not a lesson study anymore? So uh, lesson study is this uh, big complex thing with a lot of elements. And then at times you would like to just, uh, well, pick some of the more salient elements, the, the elements that you think are most likely to bear fruit in your own institutional and uh, cultural context. And that's why I have this uh, picture of, uh, of the cherries. It's a well-known phenomenon, uh, at least in research, that you can uh, try to pick out the, the most salient elements and then focus on them. It's not a very, uh, well, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a good practice, so to speak, actually, to do this, because then you probably miss out on something. But uh, perhaps that is not the case uh, with lesson study. Perhaps it is possible to take out the best elements and uh, see them come to fruition. So that is what uh, I have tried to do. And of course, together with my colleagues, we have tried to, to do this. And um, the first uh, project that I'm going to look at is uh, I call this, uh, well, it is looking together at mathematics lessons. Uh, but anyway, if we are going to say something about uh, the elements that uh, we like to see in a lesson study, uh, to see if some of them are more salient than others, then perhaps we should try to flesh out or say more concretely what are the elements that uh, could be in a lesson study. And uh, I have a list here and then. You have already heard Jakob talking about other elements that are not in this list, like open lessons and writing a report. But anyway, this is a kind of our well uh, bucket list of things that uh, we would like to see in an ideal lesson study. And that is uh, one thing that is a, a relatively long uh, IPNQ phase. That is the uh, study of materials and research before actually try to attack a teaching problem. That would be nice to have. It would be nice uh, if uh, the teachers engaged in a lesson study had a well, <laughs> a clear purpose, uh, a clear view of what are we going to learn. 
by doing this lesson study. It is not perhaps always necessary that it is a research purpose per se, but that if you are focused on the, what are you going to find out here, what are your expectations. Then, of course, uh, an element is uh, the lesson plan. Uh, it has been said in several studies that the, the special notion of the lesson plan and lesson studies are, are very central. It would be a kind of a, a bridging uh, element when you are going from what happens in the classroom, what happens when the teachers plan it, and uh, what do they do when they reflect on the lesson. So it's a central uh, part of lesson study. It could also be a lot about the notion of anticipating student solutions and solution processes. That is an important part of doing a lesson study that's trying to figure out how do we actually think that students will go through with this uh, content and how are they going to do it and what are the pitfalls and so on. It has, of course, also a lot to do with uh, what Jacob termed the, uh, the problem-solving approach or the structured problem-solving approach. That is usually taken as something which is also a part of lesson study because it um, it provides a nice structure for the lessons and, and how to be able to gain some knowledge about what the students learn if you have a, a certain uh, definite uh, and, uh, and well thought out structure. In the lesson. Perhaps inside this uh, structured problem solving notions are also some well usual elements at least of uh, the Japanese uh, teaching style or the script uh, of teaching in Japan. And that is uh, the idea that you uh, have to be able to get the students hooked on uh, what you are going to put into this, uh, this lesson. There has to be some kind of idea, uh, some kind of question that will guide them and make them interested in, in uh, figuring out what this lesson is about. Then there's the element of... Uh, the teacher looking at the pupils, going about monitoring what they are doing, and uh, they need this uh, perhaps uh, later on in the lesson to make a good uh, comparison discussion and make a good uh, sum up of the lesson. So there's a lot of elements here that uh, you could take into consideration. And um, then, of course, so there's this element of reflecting uh, together with your colleagues. Uh, that could be very important for having a lesson study at all. And then, of course, you might also be in need of somebody outside your own school to come in with fresh ideas and fresh perspectives on what you are actually going to look at in this lesson study. It could be also be about revising the lesson plan. After you have taught it, you draw some conclusions, and um, then you have to, well, what did you actually gain? by doing this. And uh, just a, a slight moment, I just had uh, my daughter, I had to get out of this room, sorry. Sorry, it's at home, it's the holiday season. <laughs> so, I was uh, talking about revising the lesson plan and then, of course, also perhaps retaking the lesson plan. And uh, as Jacobs talked about writing reports or in any way trying to disseminate what you have found out during the lesson study, that could be important for having a lesson study at all. So, in this uh, small project called CSAM, looking together at Madeline, which is really just a uh, a multiple case study, you could say it's part of a, a much larger, larger project. But uh, what I'm going to say now is just about uh, five teachers at two schools. There was uh, three teachers at one school and two teachers at the other. And uh, they have not been doing lesson study in any way beforehand. They were just, uh, well, they were newcomers. They were new to lesson study in, in any possible way. But uh, they were presented with this project and agreed to, okay, that sounds interesting. Let's try to engage in this. Uh, so there was no particular uh, leadership, school leadership support. It was just the uh, teachers interested in uh, developing their own practice. And then we kind of packaged the project into, well, a very compact form where we had just two workshops 
for the teachers at each four hours. And then uh, these teachers were to carry out six uh, research lessons during uh, half a year. And uh, when they made this uh, research lessons, they, for one thing, they had to make a lesson plan. They had to talk it over with a, uh, well, one of my colleagues from the university college. So they had to make the plan and uh, talk with someone outside of their own school environment about it. And then they, of course, would have to teach the lesson and they would have to video record this lesson. Uh, and afterwards, they would look together with this uh, university college partner uh, to see what happened in the lesson and see did this follow the plan and what happened and what did we learn from this. So in this setting, we have some elements of the whole big complex of lesson study that we thought were important to, to set our focus on. And there's some other things about what is uh, not perhaps what happens per se in the classroom, but what is around the classroom, that's what we sometimes call the paradidactic infrastructure. And I have already said it, it is about preparing the lesson plan. It was about uh, having something to consult with about this lesson plan. It has to do about uh, getting some feedback on the plans. And then there was the didactic uh, infrastructure focus, that is what happens inside the classroom. What should we try to talk about what you try to learn from the, the lesson and that the focus was here on, on how students actually interact with the content. And it was actually also how the teachers get the students to hook on to the content. So that could be by phrasing the, uh, the question for the day uh, in a very specific way so that the students could engage uh, with this uh, this. The, the topic or the content of the lesson. Then it's also about uh, giving some feedback to the teacher about how does he mediate this uh, the, the, the exploration of the question and so on. What does uh, he do to make the student interact with the content? And finally, how does the teacher collect it all together? How does he interact uh, with the student after they have had their own uh, phase of uh, personal and uh, personal investigations uh, of this uh, today topic. So then uh, I'll try to just move a little around uh, in this uh, slide. I'm going to put uh, these ideal elements in the lesson study in the middle here, and then uh, I'll try to say, okay, where do we in this project think that there should be some connections uh, between, well, an ideal uh, lesson study and then our own project? And I have tried to make these uh, little uh, red stripes uh, saying that what we were mostly looking at is the, uh, the preparation phase uh, that has to do with the lesson plan. And then it has something to do with the script of the lesson, trying to make some kind of a structured problem solving environment. For the, the student and the teacher to engage in. What we did not have here was uh, the reflection among colleagues, among peers at the school. We had the reflection with one of my colleagues from the university college. So this was uh, not a, it was not a bigger group. It was a, a small one-on-one -on -one, uh, reflection uh, between the, the teacher who carried out the lesson uh, and then. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, the knowledgeable other. So it's a kind of a more limited way of uh, reflecting on the lesson. And there was no uh, reteaching. Uh, there was no revising of the lesson plan after it was taught. There was some, of course, revisions in the lesson plan after we had talked over the initial plan, but there was no reteaching, there was no rewriting of the lesson plan, and there was no uh, dissemination of these uh, findings. Uh, at least that was not in the paradidactic infrastructure that this was going to happen. There was nothing to support it. And that is kind of a, well, a, a regular thing on, on Danish schools that there is no paradidactic uh, infrastructure to support this kind of thing. So looking at uh, some of the results afterwards, uh, 
me and my colleagues uh, sat down and uh, we looked at each of these teachers as a case. And we tried to review the lesson plans. We reviewed the recorded lesson. We had special interviews with the, each teacher afterwards. And uh, I made some kind of self-interview uh, with my colleagues uh, where we discussed their experiences uh, having this kind of one-on-one -on -one reflection session with the teachers. And then, of course, also we tried to, well, for each school, uh, make some kind of description of the conditions, uh, especially the paradidactic conditions on the school, what kind of support elements uh, were there on the school. And then uh, this process is, is very difficult. And it is uh, because the lesson study has these many interconnected uh, elements. But we tried in, in, a, in, in very long debates, <laughs> try to see, okay, if these lesson study elements were in the, each case uh, to a satisfactory <laughs> well, degree. And that is, of course, something that is very difficult to say when is something actually there, when is it, is it good enough, so to speak, because that has to do about our own expectations the teacher's own expectations. But anyway, this is uh, an exploratory case study. So uh, we actually think it, it, uh, it's a nice way to actually try to get a little more precise knowledge uh, about what actually goes on in these kind of processes. So when we look uh, down on these numbers, uh, we can see that there is no true uh, can to face uh, in any way. And you can see the two. Uh, Anyway, let me just say that the, the, first, uh, the first column here is uh, how we judge the, the case, and, and uh, the second column is how the teacher, through the interview with them, also expressed that uh, this element was some kind of and beneficial element of, of this lesson study process that had, they had been engaged with. So, no uh, close eye, thank you, Faith. Uh, and uh, for all teachers, uh, they, they don't see any kind of reason to have a, some kind of research purpose, or they just want the, the lesson to go well, and they want the, 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 the students to learn the content in so many ways. Actually, one of the teachers, uh, we believe, actually had it without being able to express it, uh, but he was actually trying to focus on, on, on finding out some uh, specific uh, knowledge about when I do this, then the children learns what. So so it's not that it's not there, it's just not always realized by the teacher. The lesson plan was actually uh, one of the more salient elements, uh, both for us and uh, for the teacher. That was uh, quite commonly agreed that uh, this is working very well, and that uh, can seem like a very, well, trivial thing, but it's actually not a trivial thing for Danish teachers to make a rather detailed lesson plan. But uh, they liked it. They liked that uh, they could uh, take the time for uh, making this lesson plan. And uh, they were not, uh, at least uh, to our interpretation, this was a satisfactory process. Then there's all this about anticipating student solution processes. It is something we think uh, in the project that it is very important to to conduct a good lesson study, uh, and also to conduct a good lesson <laughs> anyway. And uh, the, the teachers, more than us, think that they are, well, looking at this, they find it very difficult to do this. And, and it's, uh, as you say, and as uh, my colleague Jacob just said, uh, the knowledge about this is very imprecise. Uh, they, they are not, they, they attempt to do it, uh, and some of them, also think they have precise knowledge of what the students actually know and do. Uh, but actually looking at it from the outside, it is uh, not so obvious uh, that there is this precise knowledge. Well, there's a lot of uh, very different uh, points to be made here, and I can see my time is uh, nearing its end. So the overall thing to take uh, from this is that uh, the idea of having the knowledgeable other Having the lesson plan as the uh, major two elements of a much reduced lesson study is something that uh, 
enables the teachers to at least incrementally uh, further their knowledge of how is the uh, the interaction among what do I say as a teacher and what does the student do when they are working with the content. It was not necessary, perhaps, to have the V-teaching. It, it was not something that was, uh, well, for example, we asked them, okay, did you talk with your colleagues about this? Uh, did you talk about your colleagues in this very project uh, about what you learned from the lesson study? And most of them said, uh, no, it was just something that I realized on my own. And perhaps I'll just meet one of my colleagues, just briefly saying something when I passed by them in the hallway. Uh, but it was uh, difficult for them, even though it was something, you say, okay, you can, you can do that. Now you offer two teachers in one school, three teachers on the other. Perhaps you can work a little together. Uh, but it's, uh, there, was, there, there doesn't seem to be any kind of well-meeting place. When the paradidactic infrastructure is not there, but anyway, they seem to to gain from it and engage in this uh, process anyway, and then we can always discuss if it should be called lesson study or not. Okay, yeah, that was actually what I was trying to sum up here uh, with my little scribblings. Anyway, I think uh, my time is up. So the last few things I'll just say briefly, that is the uh, other project where we look at uh, systematized peer learning. And that is just to say that in this project, we are trying to look at what is in just only two small elements in the structured problem solving process. And the data for that, uh, you will have to, uh, to see some other day <laughs> when we have more time. But anyway, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, perhaps there's some discussions afterwards. I can elaborate on. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Então, pessoal, a gente vai comentar um pouco mais sobre todas as falas no final de, da última fala, certo? Vamos passar a palavra para o professor Cal. Cal, please. I have to unmute and then I have to share my screen. And a few steps. Uh, okay, then full screen. And uh, like this. Now you see it correctly, right? Yeah. Great. So, uh, th first of all, uh, th thank you very much to the organizers for inviting us from Denmark to this uh, seminary, which in, is in some sense in Brazil, but but also somehow in, in the internet. So uh, thanks for the invitation and uh, my best wishes for the Feast of the Ascension that we are celebrating today, both in Brazil and in Denmark. Um, I will talk about uh, lesson study in yet another institution in Denmark. Uh, so the first uh, Jakob's talk was about uh, primary school in Denmark, primary and lower secondary school, where I think uh, there's no doubt that uh, Jakob's uh, activity is the most uh, currently most lively and, and successful implementation of lesson study in, in at this level in Denmark. And then um, what Klaus presented uh, lesson study in teacher education for primary and lower secondary school uh, where and in both uh, institutions we have had a number of experiments uh, so with lesson study but uh, until now uh, lesson study so what what, are, what other institutions do we teach mathematics uh, in in Denmark well of course a number of others but but like the big ones are then after lower secondary school, upper secondary school or high school, and then uh, of course university. Uh, but, uh, and in Denmark, uh, upper secondary school teachers are uh, educated at university. So uh, in my daily life, I'm uh, teaching future upper secondary school teachers, uh, upper secondary school math teachers. Um, and though in upper secondary school, we have practically no 
experience of lesson study. And this is not only in Denmark, of course, but also in, in most other countries. So, so this is in some sense uh, something new. So I will try to, to talk a little bit about our first experiences with that and uh, the context of that. Uh, so it, it all began with a series of European projects. Uh, uh, the first one was uh, the project called Teachers' Inquiry in Mathematics Education. So it, it, it's about upper secondary school teaching. Uh, no, sorry, this is the, sorry, this is the current project, uh, Teachers' Inquiry in Mathematics Education. So this is the project in which we try to implement lesson study in, in high schools. It's an Erasmus Plus project that is running uh, until next year. Uh, it's a follow-up project then to another project. So this is the, was the pre predecessor project, Miria. Uh, which was uh, not about teachers' inquiry, but more about uh, implementing inquiry-based designs in high school. So where researchers would design something and then it would be experimented in, in, in high schools. But now the idea with time is for teachers to do similar designs and, and inquiry. Uh, yeah. So uh, both projects involved uh, teams of researchers and also high school teachers in four different European countries, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, Denmark, and Netherlands. I've tried to show on the map there. And um, the method then of time is in some sense lesson study or kind of implementation of lesson study in the European institutions. So we consider lesson study as a method for teachers' inquiry in mathematics education. The underlying theories of these, uh, of both projects have been the theory of didactic situations, Rousseau's theory and uh, realistic mathematics education, the Dutch school founded by Freudenthal. So maybe I will come back to a little bit to how the theories play in, but of course here the main interest is lesson study. At present, you can find uh, some common products uh, of the projects at this website, timeproject.eu. First, uh, a handbook on lesson study, which is a kind of manual on how to complete the different phases of lesson study, what is important and so on. And this is, of course, a handbook that was written for the teams of teachers that participate in, in the project. We have developed templates for lesson plan based on TDS, so using TDS uh, notions to structure lessons and so on. And also for templates for practice reports. These templates have been translated into Portuguese by our colleague uh, Regina uh, from Brazil, from the University of Brazil. So I think if you contact her, you will be able to get these templates in Portuguese. Maybe perhaps also at some point there could be a translation of the handbook into Portuguese. But at the moment it's available in English and also in the other languages of the project members at this website. We developed a design manual, but this is not finished, which is more theoretical about how to do didactic design to help teachers construct uh, lessons that are more uh, thoroughly based on, on uh, for, for instance, analyzing the mathematical contents. And then uh, in each of the four countries, we have teams of teachers in uh, one or more high schools who do iterated cycles of lesson study. That's the, the practical part of the project in a way. And uh, the outcomes are then reported at common meetings and in practice reports, so those written reports by teachers, which uh, are then also shared and translated and reviewed among the teams. And uh, Finally, we have uh, had uh, some workshops to share and discuss designs. Of course, we have been uh, limited by COVID-19 as everybody else during the past year, but still it was possible in most of the countries to carry out some research lessons. Um, I mean, real research lessons, not something with video or online or something. 
And I will uh, show you one case uh, in a little while. Uh, so in Denmark, previous experiments with lesson study were mainly at these levels. In high schools, uh, we don't have uh, experiment with lesson study. Uh, and there are some differences also between the, uh, I mean, elementary school levels and, and high school. And that is that uh, teachers at the high school level have a master degree in mathematics plus, and they can have a mathematics as a minor or a major, but they are relatively solidly prepared in mathematics. Uh, so there are some advantages in that, of course, but also some perhaps um, obstacles that traditionally high school mathematics is relatively formal mathematics. It begins with calculus. Uh, nowadays also we include some vector calculus and so on. So so it's, it's and there's a, a lot of content. So something like lesson study uh, could perhaps run into problems with teachers not finding time or interest in, in students' inquiry and so on. But more recently, there's also a strong focus in the Danish high school on using computer algebra system and teaching applications of mathematics. That helps a little bit. Also, the latest reform had more focus on mathematical inquiry. So many teachers in high school are now asking themselves, how do we uh, realize that in in uh, in the high school setting? And this is, of course, also su a support for our projects uh, or help. So in the Maria project, uh, it was about designing uh, realistic, interesting, inquiry-oriented uh, lessons. Uh, what, with designs being tested in all four countries and results being compared. And now the time projects, we engage the teachers in doing the designs through lesson study. But I reiterate that uh, in some sense, lesson study in upper secondary school is, is not something that we can just copy even from East Asia because it's not so common there or not common at all. Uh, so so that, that is of course, uh, perhaps makes, could make it interesting even in, in East Asia. Okay, so uh, I will report on a case, uh, on a less, the second lesson study done by uh, one of our teams at uh, Michelin's uh, Gymnasium in Ringsted. Uh, the theme of this case lesson is piecewise defined functions and the, le the research lessons. So there is always two in these cycles. Uh, two cycles. So first research lesson was November 23 and the second December 10. So there was a period there where we could actually go to schools and observe and so on. So the objective of the lesson is uh, construct piecewise defined smooth functions using the bracket notation. This is a, uh, an important uh, extension of the function notion at in the first year of high school. Uh, the idea of the teachers was to use a building in Ringstad, so where the high school is, uh, and a kind of storyline exercise, w which it's a, a, an abandoned industrial building. So how would you build a ski slope uh, from the top of this building? How could you build such a slope that would be nice to ski on uh, during the winter? Uh, of course, this is not this is Denmark, not Brazil. So we have snow in the winter, and it's so it could you could how could you make a ski slope that starts from the top of that building and and ends down? So more precisely, the problem is here. So the building is thirty six meter high, and the ski slope should be maximally forty five meters from the building ending, maximally for forty five meters from the building. I mean, due to the ground available and so on. So how could the company uh, curves for all uh, design the ski slope? That's the problem. Then the students, of course, have a milieu with different tools to uh, use. So they have, uh, first of all, old mathematical knowledge about elementary non piecewise functions, linear exponential functions. They have some knowledge about regression, like exponential or uh, a linear exponential polynomial regressions that might be used. Uh, they get a handout A3 grid paper with empty coordinate system to kind of sketch their first model. Paper and pencil, they have a computer 
with software. As I mentioned, they use CAS computer about systems a lot. Uh, so that's also part of the tools they have. The lesson structure, so the lesson designed by the teachers had the following structure. And here I will use show you how they the teachers also use TDS to structure the lesson. So there's first a devolution of the problem, five minutes, an action phase where the students draw the first suggestions based on elementary functions for this ski slope are using the A3 grid paper. And then of course the, they can these can be shown to the others uh, at the blackboard during the formulation phase where the groups explain their drawings. There's a validation phase where uh, the teacher can help the students uh, discuss how the pieces fit together, uh, continuity perhaps is there uh, um, something that is, is, is not very nice to ski on because it, it kind of, there's a kind of uh, non-smooth place. And then in the second phase of the lesson, so this is this is kind of two two step lesson. The students are asked to describe their functions mathematically, so with symbols. Uh, so again, there are these phases and uh, uh, validation in particular of these symbolic uh, representations, and finally an institutionalization, where the teacher introduces for the first time the bracket notation for piecewise defined functions. So this is the goal of the lesson of was to introduce that based on a, uh, an experience of, of the students, of its, their needs to use more than one uh, formula to describe a function. Okay, so uh, here are some of this. The teachers have, of course, not just planned the lesson, but in the lesson plan, they have also developed some hypotheses for student solutions. So I, I haven't translated because I will not be able to give you all the details, but uh, here you have some mathematical uh, uh, tools the teacher, the students might use. And here you have some material, some material parts of the milieu that they could use to, to, uh, to present those. So, so the, this grid, this matrix is used by the teachers to organize at least some of the observation of student work during the lesson. And here you see the, the PowerPoint or for the institutionalization where the teacher finally gives the official explanation of what is a piecewise linear function as an example of a piecewise defined function. Okay, so what happens? Uh, so here you see the class. Uh, they are sitting with good distance because of the corona measures. And this is the val first validation phase where the, the students have, are showing and uh, validating their, their first uh, models of the ski slope. Um, and you can see an observing teacher here. There were uh, six or seven observing teachers during this uh, uh, research lesson. And here you see some examples of this student work uh, during this first phase. Oops, ah, it's a little bit delayed, sorry. Uh, yeah, so here you see some examples of the kind of drawings that students make. Some of them have some formulas, many of them have just a kind of, uh, I mean, in, it should be something with a power function here, or but it's not very precise. So that's also the idea, they should just, brainstorm and come up with some first ideas for this uh, ski slope. And then in the second cycle, of course, they come up with formulae. Some uh, observations from the first implementation of the lesson was that uh, students really get the problem immediately. So it's meaningful to them. Uh, and uh, in stage one, they alternate between very practical con considerations about how, to, for instance, that you have to be able to stop at the end of the slope and also the mathematical part. They, of course, they know that there's a contract that they should do some mathematics uh, also. It's hard for the teacher to structure the first formulation from observations as groups sometimes change strategy after they uh, see uh, has left them. So this idea of, of preparing the formulation uh, phase by observing students is not always so easy. So that's something they learn, the teachers. And in stage two, the students uh, struggle to make the function graphs meet. So of course, they have to be continuous uh, to function as a ski slope. So, and it seems the, I mean, the students need more time 
uh, and so on. Both action situations, in fact, were a bit longer than planned. Uh, it's relatively easy to see the graphs in the first phase at distance, but the formula you can't see. So there's something about the material organization of the classroom. Maybe you can also see that in the picture here that, uh, ah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I mean, it, it's quite, you can see the graphs, but anything they write on this paper will not be so clearly visible by students. So that is of course a, a problem. Um, okay, I, have, I think I cannot help to go forward. Okay, so this was the first uh, observations from the first cycle. And then of course there was a reflection meeting where, so what did the teacher draw from this? So what are the main points? The problem is good, so they want to keep it for the second cycle. Uh, the handouts uh, really support phase one, but not so much phase two. Uh, magnets would be better to fix drawings to the blackboard, very material point. Institutionalization, institutionalization at the end could be more tightly linked to students' work. This is a common problem, of course, that if you prepare it in advance on a PowerPoint. Uh, and uh, of course, it's not a one lesson job, so later lessons could invite students to use the bracket notation by themselves and so on. It's not done in a single lesson. This is the well-deserved lunch with the four teachers uh, and myself uh, afterwards. So it's also important, of course, the social part of lesson study. The, and uh, since it was a morning lesson, we couldn't go out drinking afterwards, but we had a, a nice lunch together. You can see it's just before Christmas, so there's a Christmas decoration there. Okay, uh, the revised lesson plan. So then of course they changed for the second cycle and I will not go into all the details, but there were different changes they made. Uh, in particular, the material way to, to, to have students share their work and so on was changed um, based on the reflections from the first lesson. Uh, there was also some difference because it was slightly older students with math at A level uh, for the second cycle. And of course, uh, that, that might also make some differences. So I'm now citing from the practice report on cycle two. I'm not showing every detail again, but here are some things the teachers themselves note. For the second cycle, about a week later, we had changed the lesson plan. So there would be a sharper line between the initial phase of designing the slope and the second phase mathematical description of the ski slope. And in the, this class, students have almost forgotten paper and pencil and they prefer to use the CAS uh, right away. And uh, the results then was that they struggled with the initial design because it's not so easy to use a computer uh, algebra system to, to uh, heuristically get ideas and so on. So that was a problem. On the other hand, it was clear that the students had more mathematical concepts to work with and could talk about asymptotes, connectedness of the graph and smoothness uh, when uh, discussing the designs. Altogether, it was surprising to see that these 10th graders of first grade in high school uh, got closer to the objectives of the lesson to understand that functions can be piecewise defined and how one can write the function than the present grade 11 students. So that, that is a, an interesting observation. In the second cycle, we partitioned the blackboard so the students knew exactly where to put their first drawings and we had magnets to fix them on the board, it made it easier to take them down again and so on. So there were also some practical outcomes for the teachers from the second cycle, uh, trying, trying new ideas to fix the, the things and so on, make it more clearly structured for the students. So what it's in Japan sometimes called uh, the art of, of organizing the blackboards um, and so on. Okay, so this were some of the, this was the case and now I will end with some conclusions about our first experiences with uh, lesson study in high school. So we have completed three two cycle lesson studies in two different teams. Uh, 
so uh, and both uh, we the t uh, as researchers and also the teachers are, are actually still convinced that lesson study can be adapted successfully to high school with potential of teachers gaining new and interesting uh, experiences um, in particular the planning reflection and reporting can uh, fruitfully draw on teachers strong mathematical background uh, if you insist that there has really to be this attention to the contents on the other hand uh, for planning whole class inquiry we note similar obstacles as we have faced in lower grades uh, the teachers are mostly used to either lecturing or supervising groups but whole class inquiry they are not so used to organized so they are learning uh, almost like uh, i would say uh, novice teachers when trying to uh, to to uh, construct lessons and carry out lessons that imply whole class inquiry and also they have the teachers have very little experience with planning and conducting such uh, uh, lessons with whole class formulation and validation and in relation to open-ended problems and this is this is often a very important uh, part of these research lessons of course so so that is perhaps also you can say that they have a lot to learn there so that that is in some sense an advantage we also emphasize that uh, lesson study it's not just a teacher's activity it requires continuous input from the outside both in the planning observation and reflection phase and this is indeed where in the project we experience that lesson study can be a very fruitful interface between school and university which is otherwise missing in particular talking about uh, uh, the more advanced levels like high school so uh, that was what I planned to say. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, looking forward to the questions and discussion with Klaus and Jakob and everyone else present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Thank you to all of you. So I'm going to summarize a little bit for who doesn't speak in English, uh, but it will be fast and then we'll go to the questions. Então, só para a gente resumir um pouco sobre o que foi dito nas três falas dos professores, o professor Jacob, ele faz um percurso histórico da vida dele, acadêmica, que trouxe para as escolas municipais de Namarquesas o projeto de Lesson Study. Então, ele começou com isso no seu doutorado, onde ele trabalha Lesson Study junto também com a base da teoria das situações didáticas, e os professores acharam muito interessante essa, esse projeto e pediram para que ele continuasse nas escolas. Então, ele foi contratado como formador de professores para institucionalizar isso nas escolas municipais de Namarquesas. É, não foi uma tarefa fácil, como os três também já disseram, assim, os desafios que acontecem numa lesson study, mas foi uma experiência e está sendo uma experiência muito boa. É, desde 2020 até agora, foi o projeto que ele focou mais na apresentação. Então, é um trabalho com três escolas, mas em vez de trabalhar nas três escolas, eles focaram em uma com todos os professores, que dá um total de 20 professores e dois não têm experiência de lesson. Nessa última que teve em 2020. É, também fizeram algumas modificações e nessa escola modelo eles trabalharam com alguns workshops que trouxeram os professores também japoneses para contribuir é, em uma conferência com vários professores. Então, é, inclusive eu tive a oportunidade de estar presente em uma dessas Open Lessons que foi em 2017 em 2018, desculpem, e eram na quadra da escola, onde tinha o toque da aula, os alunos iam para lá, estava organizada como uma sala de aula normal, e ao redor tinham várias cadeiras e vários professores de várias escolas assistindo. E isso deu um suporte muito grande, que ele, é, ele chama, os professores chamam de inspiração concreta. E eles destacam isso como uma motivação para continuar dentro do projeto. 
É, o desenvolvimento, ele destaca que é lento, mas que há mudanças no, na, na, profissão, na profissão do professor e que foi difícil adaptar a, o método para as escolas dinamarquesas, especialmente a parte de ensinar através da resolução de problemas. E ele traz uma pergunta, quais são as possíveis aprendizagens dos professores? E destaca alguma delas. Eu vou passar logo para a próxima, porque senão não vai dar tempo para as perguntas, certo? É, Klaus, ele aborda um projeto com 20 professores. E ele traz a pergunta inicial, o que podemos obter da lesson study antes que não seja mais uma lesson study? E ele destaca todos os elementos da lesson. E depois pergunta quais elementos podem ficar de fora. Existe algum, existe algum elemento que pode ficar de fora? Então, esse projeto foi em duas escolas com cinco professores. Desculpa, eu falei 20. Foi, foram duas reuniões de quatro horas cada, onde eles realizaram seis, seis aulas por professores. E é, ele traz a diferença comparando os elementos da lesson entre infraestrutura é, paradidática e infraestrutura didática. E a infraestrutura paradidática é, envolve a maioria dos elementos, mas a didática, ela traz aquela parte da relação do aluno com o conteúdo, é, o meio que foi organizado para aquela é, sequência didática. E foi um projeto muito difícil, é um professor que trabalha com a formação de professores, certo? Nos anos iniciais e finais. E os elementos da lesson que os professores consideram satisfatoriamente presentes e benéficos foi o que ele destacou. Então, alguns elementos eles não consideram como, por exemplo, a, o feedback dos outros colegas sobre as aulas. Isso foi algo negativo, porque eles não têm confiança de estar conversando com os colegas, então, às vezes, é só uma passada no corredor, viu o professor, aí o amigo me perguntou como foi, essas coisas, e essa foi uma das dificuldades que ele mais destacou. Cal, ele traz um projeto no ensino médio, que começou em 2016, como um teste de implementação de alguns planos de aula, mas depois, em 2020, em outro projeto, que é até 2022, em quatro países, ele traz a elaboração desses planos pelos professores e não pelos pesquisadores. Aborda dois, duas lessons, que foi em, em Copenhague, um ano de 23 de novembro e outra em 10 de dezembro, em duas turmas diferentes. Mas a mesma, o mesmo problema, que é, é para construir uma função... É, por partes, utilizando colchetes e depois, é, o, depois representar graficamente essa função sobre uma pista de esqui em cima de um prédio de estacionamento é, que já existe lá. Foi, eles viram que o tempo que deram na primeira aula para os alunos fazerem a, o, resolverem o problema foi pouco, então eles já modificaram para a segunda aula e teve algumas modificações, mas que não foi possível destacar devido ao tempo. Foi bastante interessante. Os professores aprenderam muito e viram que é possível realizar a lessonidade no ensino médio, algo que ainda não é comum em muitos países. Então, a gente agora vai partir para as perguntas. Certo? Eu vou tentar traduzir o máximo possível das respostas e resumir. Uh, we are going to start the questions. The first question is from Gilberto. Gilberto pergunta, I will speak in Portuguese and you can read the question in English, ok? Uh, Gilberto pergunta quais aspectos sociais e culturais da Dinamarca têm influenciado o desenvolvimento da Lesson Study visando a melhoria das formações dos professores? Who wants to... I, I think the question uh, on my screen was in Portuguese. Was in Portuguese? Okay, I will... Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, Brazilian. Um, 
I think I can, tra I can translate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> what social and cultural as aspects of Denmark have influenced the development of the lesson study, aiming to improve the train the teachers' education? That's for you, Klaus. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, um, it, it is a. Uh, it is difficult to say if it has actually influenced teacher education in any way yet. It is uh, well small pockets of uh, interest in the uh, lesson study among uh, teacher educators and among uh, select uh, teachers. And um, I, I think if there's one thing that you can say it has influenced, it is the uh, idea of, of, of well, getting to know some kind of more specific knowledge about when you as a teacher say this kind of thing, then uh, what does the student do? Uh, and, and this idea is, um, is kind of more central to, to teacher education now than it has been uh, years back. It, it is perhaps more focused on, on the, the position of knowledge. That thing, I think, is a is a new thing that lesson study has, has brought, uh, to, well, amongst other things. But but the extent of, of, of lesson study ideas is not very great in Denmark. It's not a, a common practice. <laughs> okay, thank you. Então a ideia de aprimorar um conteúdo, um conhecimento sobre um determinado conteúdo, isso foi o que mais influenciou na é, na, na, digamos, na realização dos projetos de Lesson Study na Dinamarca. Esse foi o aspecto fundamental. A ideia do professor é aprender mais sobre determinado conhecimento, aprofundar o conhecimento sobre um, um conteúdo. Vamos para a próxima pergunta, que é de Dario. Dario, I'm not sure. Dr. Ben mentioned that teachers were initially skeptical of the lesson set process. What changed throughout the lesson set process that shift the art students? Então, quais mudanças é, fora da lesson study, do processo de lesson study, que é, contribuiu para as atitudes dos professores? So, uh, can I see my screen? I just want to. Uh... I just want to show here. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? There. So, if you look at the the quote here, which starts in in lesson study, we work well. So this quote is from one of the teachers who was very skeptical in the beginning, but it it really wasn't very long in in the in the work with lesson study that he, he realized that this was totally different. And what he experienced and what the teachers experienced was a totally different way of working with the teaching and students learning. So this quote is actually after only quite short experience with a lesson study from this teacher's side. So he shifted quite fast, realizing it's a totally different way of working with students learning. I hope that answers my question. The, the details will take too long. <laughs> Então, pode botar a pergunta novamente, Felipe, por favor. É, com relação a essas mudanças, obrigada. Com relação a essas mudanças, ele traz exatamente essas aprendizagens que os professores mencionaram, como aquela questão do professor que já tinha 20 anos de experiência e ele é, nunca tinha participado de algo que realmente tinha valido a pena como, enquanto professor, mudar e, e se desenvolver profissionalmente. E aí ele aborda todas aquelas aprendizagens que eu não consegui decorar tudo, mas que isso é, contribuiu para essa mudança na vida profissional do professor, independente dele estar dentro de um processo de lesson study ou fora dele. A próxima pergunta é de... Só um segundo... De Claudio. 
professors, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start lesson study in your city? Então, que sugestões eles dão para as pessoas que querem começar é, um processo de lesson study na sua cidade? É o Daricado. Tu viu? Sorry. So, so, sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's very difficult to give advice because it depends on the, the institutional context uh, of the country. It's one experience we have at least from uh, even in the, between the European countries, it's different from mm -hmm. one country to another. But um, uh, I think one uh, general uh, impo important thing is you really need to have the support of the school management because mm. the school management governs the time uh, sets the priorities uh, and so on for the teachers work so in many i think in many uh, countries maybe brazil also uh, it's something you cannot just do uh, from the streets you have to uh, first agree with the school management uh, to do it uh, and then, of course, there has to be a commitment of, I think it's also important there's a commitment of more than one team of teachers, because mm. otherwise it's too isolated. It's a very important part of uh, lesson study in our experience to come and observe what other teams of mm. teachers have done. So don't start too small. I would say you have to have uh, <laughs> uh, you you have to have a that has has to be as a kind of mm, yeah minimal uh, environment before it really makes sense and and before you can really realize uh, the the minimal uh, potentials of lesson study. Of course, there are many obstacles in Brazil and in Denmark because it's not common among teachers. So. Uh, everything has to be done for the first time in the beginning and so it, it's also I think in most countries the experience is that even uh, developing a lesson study culture is something that can take several years even within the same school so it's not something you can do in one month or something like that you have I mean then it's better I think to give up if you have just one month or <laughs> Uh, you don't want to spend too much time on it and the teachers are not al are also not very engaged and so on uh, then I think uh, forget it uh, so mm -hmm. so first uh, establish some minimal conditions uh, and what these minimal conditions are depend of course on the local institutions and culture and so on but yeah I, I, I would like to add something can okay. I add something yeah Okay, because uh, I, I, I agree with what you say, Carl, but I also think that sometimes the, the first lesson study can be very uh, crucial because you will, you, if, if you get the right experiences, it will really uh, turn you on and it will make you uh, spread the word and you can engage other people. So sometimes it can work, but, but at fairly early in the efforts, you need sort of, I mean, you need some mass or something. And then I just want to say that one thing that I, at least this is the case in Denmark, I have heard about so many lesson study projects where when I afterwards hear about how they've been working and what they've been, been looking at, they forgot to look about the students' work with mathematics. And I think this is a crucial part. And if you, if you don't really get focused on the students work with mathematics then I think you should find different formats then it's something else you should do perhaps I can also uh, okay yeah it's, it's just because uh, you, you have to both decide your own uh, well, level of ambition and then perhaps uh, the lesson study the whole lesson study format is perhaps not what you want to to go with if uh, you think that some lesson study processes produce good knowledge about the students' learning, as Jacob said, then I think it is okay to start with that. You, you cannot perhaps call it lesson study, but you take the good results and good ideas in lesson study and then use them, use them in, in, in other projects. And at least that's my experience, that if you don't have this uh, big critical mass that uh, Carl 
and Jacob talks about, then then you have to settle for something smaller and then take the, the good ideas from lesson study and, and try to use them. And then at some point, I think you can perhaps work it up to say, okay, then we can take something more in and make it more uh, of a whole lesson study. But uh, that can be perhaps that's just my uh, humble perspective. Thank you. Thank you. So I will try to summarize. Uh, vou tentar resumir aqui um pouco, certo? Tiveram algumas convergências e divergências. É, eles falam que é necessário ter um suporte muito grande em relação à direção de escola, em relação aos professores, é, secretaria de educação. E isso faz com que você consiga algo grande para não começar tão pequeno. Esse foi um ponto que Carl tocou para poder você ter um apoio e conseguir realizar esse projeto. Já Klaus, ele traz o, o ponto de que se você não tiver essa oportunidade, você pode começar aos poucos e é, só com alguns professores, pouca gente. Mas, é, Jacob também destaca que um ponto crucial é que os professores esqueceram de olhar para a aprendizagem dos alunos e esse, esse é o foco da Lesson Study. E quando a gente traz isso para os professores, é, faz com que eles reflitam sobre a importância de olhar para a aprendizagem dos alunos e possam é, se sentir convidados a participarem do projeto. É, vão ter inúmeros desafios, tanto acontece aqui como lá na Dinamarca, mas é possível, e que a gente não desista na primeira, no primeiro projeto, porque se a gente desistir no primeiro projeto, é, não vai ter como continuar. É muito, são muitos desafios, principalmente nos primeiros projetos de lesson. E também, é, se você só tiver um mês para é, realizar o projeto, nem comece, porque não vai ser suficiente. Vamos passar agora para o comentário de José Siqueira. Now we have only a comment. José Siqueira says that the lesson set has offered alternative ways to learn mathematics and allowed the production of meanings to participants during collective discussion. Então, a lesson study, ela vem como uma alternativa para aprender matemática e possibilitar a produção de conhecimentos, de significados para os participantes de uma forma coletiva, a partir das discussões. The next question is from Maria Alice, Professora Maria Alice. That's for Klaus. Uh, where's the question? Uh, I'll make here. Mr. Klaus, could you say... Uh, no, it's not this question. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Could you say a little more about the uses of kick and... I don't know how to say it. Kikan Yunshi and Kikan Shido in the applications of lesson studies, what are they and how did they happen? Yes, thank you. I have tried to elaborate a little in the comments, uh, but in general, it, it's what the teacher do while the students are working. And uh, it's uh, kind of, well, two sides of the same coin. Does the teacher go about uh, just observing uh, primarily what the students do, taking notes, uh, mental notes about what uh, does each uh, student realize and not realize? That would be one thing. That's uh, usually the key can use. And it could also be what does the, the, the teacher do while the students are working to make them well progress, to the teacher intercede in some kind of way, uh, when and how and, and how best to do that. Uh, and all this is uh, closely connected with the Neriyaki phase, where the teacher tries this uh, discussion and comparison phase, where the teacher tries to uh, find it all together, uh, the collective uh, investigation of the whole class. So, yeah. Uh, and, and Jakob can perhaps say more about it, that uh, this is a... This is part of the, the, the Japanese script of many lessons. And, and in some ways, it's, uh, I think it has become part of, of many lesson studies. And I also believe that it is a, as a good way to conduct your class. But also, at least some of our Danish teachers say that 
they don't always have a situation uh, and they don't always have a content uh, in their teaching that kind of fits with this kind of script for a lesson. Uh, and I think it's a continuing debate uh, whether all kinds of content is uh, fit for a structured problem solving or are there also some other elements to the teaching that cannot be, well, used profitably uh, in lesson study? So, so should I, I don't know if I should follow, but it, it, it's my impression that you got the Kikan Junshi and Kikan Shido are, are basically two different uh, ways of uh, of working in the classroom. At one, and I think that many teachers will probably mix the two a little, but in general, Kikan Junshi is more like you're monitoring, which you also said, Klaus, and the Kikan Shido is more like you are, you are teaching or instructing um, specific children. What we see often is that teachers, they will go around monitor, and then they, so which is the Junshi part, and then they will occasionally uh, do a little shido to, to some of the students, so they will mix it. But sometimes I also get the impression that it's um, some teachers believe that uh, the, the one kind is better than the other. So I think that in Japan there is also maybe some teach while well, some teachers will, will mix the two, some teachers will also try to focus more on the one than the other. But uh, but I also agree that it, it's really difficult for our teachers to really uh, learn how to, to, to do this, learn the techniques for Kikan Junji and Kikan Shiro. Because as you say, we, we don't really have the good problems often. And if you don't have a good problem, there is nothing to monitor. And if you don't uh, train your children to work, that, that they really should understand that what is important here is your your work on paper and between the uh, peers, then uh, there will be nothing to monitor. And next step is that if you can even monitor something, you need to analyze it and, uh, and uh, then uh, put it into to some for yourself, uh, some information that you can use to organize the following uh, Niriyaki session. So it's really a lot of difficult and totally new techniques that have to be learned for teachers, and we don't, and we hardly know how to get this started. So <laughs> it's a huge challenge. Yeah. Thank you. Então a pergunta da professora Maria Alice era sobre o que eram as etapas de Kikun e Junchi e Kikun Shido. E ele fala que são duas formas de se trabalhar em sala de aula, que é em grupos, onde o professor vai passando pelos grupos, ou então o professor olha para o aluno individualmente. E que isso é complicado de se escolher, porque nós não temos bons problemas. Então, se a gente não tem bom problema, como é que a gente vai escolher determinada é, forma de abordar? E aí, é, depois disso... Eles podem, os professores geralmente escolhem trabalhar em pares, mas não tem muito uma, um direcionamento se ele vai olhar para ao redor dos grupos ou se ele vai olhar individualmente. Eu não sei se eu consegui captar todas as informações, mas foi o que foi possível. Temos um agradecimento do professor Isolda, que vai ser colocado aí. Professor Isolda uh, has some comments. Let's see. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much, Carl and Klaus and Jakob. It's informative for what and how is going the market secondary school level based on TDS. From Masami. Thanks for your comment, Masami. And we have, oh uh, yeah, now the comments. Just one more question because we don't have time. So, um, Professor Raimundo Alfos to Carl. Uh, 
I think that's a red up here. Do you think an open approach is appropriate to traditional tests related to university trends? Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a little bit difference between the educational systems of uh, Brazil and Denmark. Uh, so we don't have university entrance examinations, but we have something very similar. It's just at the exit of high school. So the uh, grades, so there are some tradition, I mean, you could say traditional tests or examinations at the end of high school. And the results from this will determine what universities uh, education you can get access to. So, so, so yes, there's of course a problem that high school I think that's also a reason why uh, lesson study is not so common in uh, even in East Asia and high schools that these schools tend to be more oriented towards preparing uh, for for uh, formal tests and so on. Uh, but um, what we so and this is of course also the case in many other of the other European countries, especially uh, not only Denmark. That that there is this difference. Uh, so what could be the role of open approach in that situation? Well, one thing that we agree with our teachers about is that. Also in high school, you would not teach every lesson as a as an inquiry lesson, as a lesson based on an open problem. Not every lesson, but for crucial notions that uh, it's really uh, important students uh, understand. Like, uh, I think this example, the case I gave was a good example. So the extension of the idea of function from being just one single formula to that you can piece together several different formulas and it's still a function. Uh, this is an, a very important idea uh, that uh, it's, I think it, it could be important for students, uh, uh, let's say mathematical independence and, and autonomy to have seen arise uh, from um, as an answer to a problem, not just an answer with, with no question, so to speak. So. So I would say uh, punctual lessons, especially for more theoretical parts of the high school curriculum, when you introduce new theoretical ideas or perhaps difficult uh, uh, proofs or something like that, it could be important that, uh, that these difficult answers, so for instance, this definition of piecewise defined function, uh, it's not just an answer that has no question, but arises for the students as a rational solution to a problem. So it could have a, a place, I think, in in high school, but uh, it would be for more theoretical points, and of course not for everything you do in high school. Uh, the same could be said about lesson study, because it's lesson study is not only interesting when 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 it's there is an open problem when you don't know what students will do and so on. It's not interesting to observe uh, students doing uh, traditional test items uh, for a whole lesson. So, so of course, there's a, an interaction there. But OK, so long answer. But I would say for more theoretical points, yes, I think it could, could play a, a useful role. Thank you, Carl. Então, o professor Ramundo, ele pergunta se você acha que a abordagem aberta é apropriada para testes tradicionais relacionados ao ingresso na universidade. E o professor Cal, ele diz que sim, pode ser. É algo que não acontece lá na Dinamarca, porque os testes são é, a partir de, das, dos testes que acontecem durante a escola, na, no ensino médio. Então, é assim que as pessoas entram na, na universidade. E que ele mostra que, embora essa, esse problema tenha sido muito interessante e possa trabalhar uma só função em várias partes, não quer dizer que a gente possa trabalhar todas as aulas dessa forma, mas que acredito que é possível, sim, é, abordar, ter essa abordagem aberta para a entrada na universidade. So, the end of the questions. Thank you very much to all of you. It was really great to listen to you and share what I uh, 
uh, had the opportunity to see in Denmark with all Brazilians. So I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you very uh, much for, thank the you for the invitation and for all the yeah. nice questions. Yeah. Agradeço aos professores Carl, Jacob e Klaus por terem é, contribuído aqui com o nosso seminário internacional. Foi bastante importante e a gente teve a oportunidade de conhecer como está sendo é, vários projetos de Lesson Study na Dinamarca. Espero que vocês todos tenham gostado bastante e tenham aproveitado. É, vamos, inclusive, convidar todos vocês para a nossa atividade cultural, que será agora em um outro link que está no comentário. So, we invite all of the participants to see the culture activity that will be in the link that is in the comments. You can see. So, thank you very much and see you. Mantak. <laughs> Seltak, you must be very tired now, Luska. <laughs> Translating. Nice work. But I have another nice one tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Tak bye bye. Tak bye bye. 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 Bye bye